There was a time when Door County, Wisconsin, ruled the entire nation. It was a beautiful, small, round, red fruit. And this tiny, rock-bound peninsula had more of them than anywhere else in the country. Door County was, and is, Cherryland, USA. In the good old first industries were fishing and logging. The latter half of the 1800s saw clear-cutting of virtually all virgin stands of pine and hardwood. After the trees were gone, the people of Door County quickly found out that the newly cleared land wasn't good for much. At least not in the northern half of the county, where the soil can be so thin that bedrock is just a boot scrape away. But in 1862, a Swiss immigrant farmer in Sturgeon Bay, Joseph Zettel, started the first orchard, an apple orchard, and discovered the land was excellent for growing fruit. Word spread quickly through the county, and soon others began a few plantings. Apples, pears, and plums all did well, and a local cottage industry was born. In 1891, Door County's remarkable fruit production caught the attention of horticulture professor E.S. Goff of the University of Wisconsin and his associate A.L. Hatch, a prominent commercial fruit grower from Richland County. Visiting Door County, they found ideal fruit growing conditions. Cool summers, a late spring, and a limestone dolomite bedrock. In fact, the same bedrock, the Niagara Escarpment, as Western New York's famous fruit-growing region. After buying their own land near Sturgeon Bay, Goff and Hatch set out to find the best fruits for growing. Starting first with apples, plums, pears, and strawberries, in 1896, they set out three acres of tart cherries, and soon thereafter, found their perfect fruit. By 1919, Door County was producing more cherries than it could sell as fresh fruit. At the same time, a local pea cannery, the Reynolds Preserving Company, was getting out of the business after several years' battle with pea blight. Reynolds had already invested heavily in by then maturing cherry orchards, so they sold their pea cannery to a newly formed co-op of which they would become a member. Now with canned cherries from their new and world's largest cherry canning factory, the formerly fresh fruit would last longer and could be shipped farther and could find a much larger market. Door County Cherries became known nationwide. But after 10 good years of major plantings and production, the Roaring Twenties came to a rapid conclusion. October 29, 1929, became the beginning of the nation's Great Depression, and demand for cherries began to drop. For the first time ever, Door County cherries were not selling themselves. They would need to be promoted, and oh, were they promoted! In 1929, under the leadership of Carl Reynolds, Door County threw a huge promotional party the first ever Cherry Blossom Festival featured a three-day historical pageant. A Cherry Blossom Queen, 17-year-old Marie Henkel, her coronation ball, and a promotional bus tour of the state by the Queen and her court. All the villages would get involved in promoting Cherry Blossom Festival weekends, bringing thousands of tourists into the county and thousands of inches of valuable newspaper coverage. A local newspaper editor and civic booster named Mitch LaPlante 
created some of the cherry industry's most famous and infamous promotion. Well, he was a big promoter, you know, and I did a feature on him one time, and he was telling me about the, one time we had a whole train load of cherries parked on the railroad, old, old railroad bridge out here, and he says, you know, there's one case of cherries on that whole train. <laughs> but he had a whole big sign all the way along the train. Another time he had a, uh, called it a tank of cherry juice and had a wedding in it. I remember seeing it there, and uh, 1939 was, and here uh, the um, vat was filled with this colored water. It was red, definitely, and then here the couple were in there in, their, in swimming suits, and uh, the um, Judge Grass was the officiant, and uh, the marriage was performed in the cherry juice. relentless promotion was to have a powerful effect. As World War II dragged the country out of economic depression, the Door County cherry industry and its smaller sibling, the apple industry, were about to enjoy their largest and peak years. The 1940s and 50s will always be remembered as the best of times. In fact, Along a five-mile stretch of road just north of Sturgeon Bay were almost 3,000 acres of cherry trees, yielding as much as 13 million pounds of cherries each year. Reynolds Brothers and other independents comprised a big portion of that acreage, but their neighbor, Martin Orchards, was able to make a claim that no one else could top. And the Martin operation grew into the largest cherry orchard in the world, and they had over 11 uh, hundred acres in cherries, which is a lot of cherries. Located along the Sturgeon Bay East Side waterfront, south of the present downtown bridge, was the huge Fruit Growers Co-op, a factory where large and small growers would bring their fresh-picked cherries each day for processing. I can remember uh, the trucks lined up to unload at the uh, Fruit Growers plant for blocks and sometimes they would sit overnight to stay in line to empty their loads because it was, uh, you, it, it was hard to get in line. They were, they were so busy, it was so full. Sundays, no one worked. It gave the factories time to catch up, uh, which was good because by Sunday you needed a rest. But I can remember those long lines of all those trucks with, with uh, you know, loaded to the top with cherries and it was a it was a big industry however the growers biggest challenge during the boom years wasn't getting the cherries to the factories it was getting them off the trees Go out there in the morning and it was damp. You'd have grass to walk in and your feet would be wet and uh, your leaves would be damp. And if you'd have rain and that or a heavy dew, and of course then uh, when you'd be reaching up, your juice, uh, cherry juice and also the moisture from the tree trickled down your, your arm. But it, uh, it wasn't the easiest. Then of course you'd hit hot days. Oh, and that was, you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't easy work by any means. The orchards used to have a lot of recreational facilities and stuff for the kids. They, we have pictures of great big tents and dining halls. And it, especially during the Depression, it was kind of a cheap uh, summer camp for people. They, people would come out of the cities and work in the camps, and they would eat, and they'd get fed, and it was free lodging. Martin Orchards uh, housed 250 German prisoners of war. These were young men who were captured in North Africa as part of Field Marshal Rommel's Africa Corps. Door County had in total 450 German prisoners of war. 
After 1945, when the German prisoners of war left, as a needed source of migratory help, Mexican nationals and their families were recruited to come to Sturgeon Bay to harvest cherries. When we started with these Texas Mexican families, yeah, that was that was the strangest thing, or not strange, but I mean, they were out there at daybreak working. And of course, you would get out, if you didn't get up right on time, you'd get out in the orchard, you might have 200 pails sitting there waiting for you to dump. They picked on these four quart pails. But they were, they were the godsend for, the, for a lot of us. I have fond memories of them coming out in the morning and either the first ones got diapers and no undershirts or else the first ones got undershirts and no diapers, but they either had one or the other, the little ones. <laughs> and they always had a tortilla in one hand and a little corn husk down in the other as they would go around the yard before their parents would go out into the orchards. Well, there were 1,400 people on the premises of Martin Orchards. And you know, there was a cafeteria and uh, services provided for them, such as laundry facilities uh, and a commissary. And that was primarily for the, the German prisoners. But there was a full store at Martin Orchards where you could buy uh, groceries. So it was really quite an operation. In fact, for the longest time, uh, it really was the, the economic backbone of Door County. The boom years of the Door County cherry industry were the 1940s and 50s. But after that, a number of major forces combined to forever change the economics of the business. In 1948, a tragic small plane crash took the lives of three of the county's most important and far-sighted cherry executives. It would prove to be a stunning blow. 100 miles east of Door County, across Lake Michigan, the state of Michigan found its climate and soil conditions better for growing larger trees with much higher yields. They planted more and more cherry trees and soon became able to dictate market pricing. Later, across the nation, cherry pie baking began to become a lost art as women joined the workforce and baked far less than their mothers had. But perhaps the most important factor was government legislation. Minimum wage increases, child labor laws, housing code requirements. Individually, each would increase labor costs. Taken together, hand-picking cherries now meant losing money. As one by one, both large and small growers alike left the business after the 1960s. A few would survive and thrive by applying ingenuity to overcome problems. We were, uh, we were hiring a lot of, um, of uh, migrant workers and we had so many state regulations and federal regulations that, that uh, uh, I started thinking about the possibility of mechanically harvesting and uh, came up with a device that was propelled by a tractor and that encircled the tree and allowed us to eliminate a lot of the hand labor. And uh, so that, that machine allowed us to cut back on a lot of our labor expense in harvesting. And if cherry pies weren't being baked as much, new products and new uses for old products would be developed. Uh, I think the future looks very bright. Uh, because of this, the, some of the new products that uh, have been created from the cherry. Uh, and then there's also the health issues where uh, cherries are very high in antioxidants, which could be helpful in uh, curing cancer and uh, heart disease, and also uh, the benefits uh, that they give uh, for arthritis problems and gout, and actually headaches. A few cherries a day, I guess, relieves a lot of pain. One of the uh, real positive things also for the cherry industry has been the dried cherry, which is a new product. It's uh, really good for you. It's like a, a dried, like, like a raisin, only it's a dried cherry. We've also sold a lot of cherries, several million pounds this last year, to folks out in California who are drying the cherries. They're being put into what's called a trio mix.
Door County's cherry orchards remain a very important part of the local economy. From Joseph Settle's first apple orchard, through Goff and Hatch, through Reynolds and Martin, to today's new breed of orchard men and women, Door County was, is, and always will be Cherryland, USA. For the tourists that came to Door County and they saw those blooms or they saw those trees and, uh, full of red cherries, and uh, there's nothing more beautiful than walking into an orchard in the spring or even in the middle of the summer. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful place. And it, the whole county, it, 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 it lent the character to this county that uh, is still remembered by a lot of people. If I had to do it over again, I'd do exactly the same way. I like it. I really like raising fruit. To get out in the orchard in the spring and the flowers are, are uh, the trees are just like a big snowball of blossoms. And the birds are singing. And you're, walk, and you're walking along and driving your tractor through millions of flowers. How does it get any better than that? That's a good place to be.